Collectors like Jerome Stone were the great generation of post-war collectors. He brought works by artists such as Chagall and Giacometti to the U.S. within months of when these pieces were created. Stone was from a generation that actually met the artist. He visited Chagall several times and bought works from the primary dealers such as Sidney Janis or Pierre Matisse. There are few collections made this way still intact in this country. When Mr. Stone first decided to begin an art collection, a friend pointed him toward Pierre Matisse, one of the great dealers of the era and the son of the painter Henri Matisse. One of the first works that Jerome saw with Pierre Matisse was the La Maison Rouge, and Jerome instantly fell in love with the painting. The work is a rich tapestry of subjects. The lovers flying above the center of the painting, the set dinner table, the home that recalls his own in Vitebsk, Russia, where he grew up. In the 30s and 40s, Chagall, living between Paris and then in New York, longed for that sense of home. One day, Mr. Stone was given a book on Léger, an artist he had never known before. But he became so intrigued by the artist, he called another great dealer, Sidney Janis. He asked Mr. Janis if he had any in stock. Janis laughed and said, we don't keep an inventory, but I have a few works you might be interested in. And so his first purchase of Léger's was from Janis. The Blue Wheel is a celebration of the rapid industrialization of society in the years following World War I. Léger thinks his art should have more of a social utility. The wheel, as a symbol, is something certainly connected to industrialization. He breaks down forms into very simple planes. As abstract as he gets, he still leaves some figuration. I see two currents within the collection. One is a Cubist-inspired hard-edge abstraction. There's also a highly emotional expressionist theme. We see that in the fanciful, surrealist poetry of his Miro, and also the agitated, highly emotive surfaces we find on the bronze bust by Giacometti and also his magnificently charged painting of the studio interior. Diego was one of the most important subjects for Alberto. As much as these are portraits of Diego, they are also self-portraits of Alberto. The face as you face the sculpture is almost illegible. And as you come around the side and you see the age in his face, it suddenly becomes a very full portrait. This oil depicts Giacometti's studio in all of its messy splendor. Giacometti, as much as sculpture was a central medium for him, he also enjoyed the process of painting. He once famously said there is no difference between painting and sculpture. And certainly in this depiction of his studio, you feel the presence of his sculptures. If you look closely, just above the center of the painting is the walking man, one of the most important motifs in Giacometti's entire career. The title of this work from 1951 by Miro loosely translates as The Sparkling Golden Bird Encircles the Thought of the Poet. These titles for Miro were very important, something very unique to him. Once you have this title in mind and you look at the painting, something comes alive in it. He creates this world. It's a fully formed, self-constructed, imaginative, beautiful place. An inspired collection frequently becomes a portrait of the collector themselves. You see a certain measured sensibility, a understatement in tonality, a quiet thoughtfulness. Mr. Stone himself was a quiet-spoken man who understood the subtleties and the importance of the art he collected.